Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a new tool called Chainsaw. Reading from the project's official GitHub repo, Chainsaw provides a powerful first response capability to quickly identify threats within Windows event logs. It offers a generic and fast method of searching through event logs for keywords and by identifying threats using built-in detection logic and via support for Sigma detection rules. Now, if you aren't familiar with Sigma, it's an open signature format that claims to be akin to snort rules for network traffic or Yara rules for files, only Sigma applies to event logs. Chainsaw allows us to search by event IDs, strings, and even regex patterns, which is pretty cool. The tool is written in Rust and claims to be extremely fast, even when parsing large numbers of logs. It can output an ASCII table format, CSV, or even JSON. So we could just clone the GitHub repo and compile Chainsaw from source, but we could also just look at the releases and download a pre-compiled version as you see here. This is by far the quickest and easiest option to get up and running. That's what I did, so let's switch over to a Windows 10 machine and check it out. And on the desktop, you'll notice a BHDX file which was created with CAPE. This was taken from the server 2019 test VM that we're going to be using as the log source for Chainsaw. I'll double click on this, and as you can see, it mounted as D colon, and if we go into C Windows System32 WinEBT logs, we should see all of our EBTX files, and they're right there. Take note, there are 297 of them in this case. That will become relevant in a few moments. All right, so now that we've looked at what we're going to be analyzing, let's go ahead and pop open Windows Terminal and run Chainsaw at first without any options, so you can see the available options. And basically what you're getting here is help being printed out on the screen. Notice that you can manually invoke help with dash H or dash dash help. And that also works for the sub commands you see below. So you can get context specific help for any of those sub commands. Speaking of those sub commands, we're going to be primarily focused on search and hunt. Now search will allow you to search through event logs for specific event IDs and or keywords. That's the first thing we'll take a look at. And then next we have the hunt functionality, which is pretty cool. This will use either built-in logic or those Sigma detection rules we talked about to basically find things that may be anomalistic or potentially evil. All right, so let's go ahead and run it with our simple search option. In this case, I'm going to type search and I'm going to specify the path to those event logs that we just looked at, the ones from the CAPE image. And now I'm going to use a dash E for event ID, and I'll specify 21, which is of course one of the event IDs used with RDP related events. So check that out, found 297 EVTX files. That number should sound familiar to you. That's the number we saw in Windows Explorer. And as it goes through and parses all of this data, it's going to basically throw up on the screen all of the different events that you see here. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I'll show you how to read this. First off, you can see that we have 24 matching log entries. And if we go up to the start of the last event, you'll notice it looks just like this. And as we scroll up, we'll see more and more of those event stanzas, I'll call them. But here you see channel, computer, event ID, if we scroll on down, of course, you'll see the standard name of the event log. Uh, you can also notice the system time, the time the event happened, the address in this case, and the username that are contained within the event. Very important information. So that's a very simple use case. And obviously is quite powerful when you're searching through quite a few event logs here. But let's go ahead and check out another example. This time we're going to use search again but now I'm going to use dash S to specify a string for which I want to search. And notice I've specified Marsha in all uppercase. That is one of the valid users within this box. So let's see what happens here. And it should be a clue to you that I did spell it in all uppercase. And what's going to happen is that we're going to get no results because this is a case sensitive search by default. You can fix that though, with another option that we're going to take a look at. But as you can see, this finished and it found zero matching log entries because the uppercase Marsha pattern does not appear. 
However, if we go back through here and then add a dash I for case insensitive, now we should get results if we repeat the search. This will search for any case variation of the word Marsha, and you're probably almost always going to want to use dash I unless you do know the case specific pattern you're looking for. We should have quite a few results. In this case, 123 matching log entries. All right, so let's scroll up and take a look at some of the events here. This is the last event or the start of the last event. And you can see right there in the hive name, we do have Marsha. So that's what matched. And if I'd scrolled on up through all of those, you would have had all the other matches, of course. All right, now let's get even more granular and specify not only the substring search pattern of Marsha case insensitive, but also the event log 21. So we're using multiple different options together here. We're saying, show me Marsha in any case variation within event ID 21. So this should narrow down the results a bit. And if we let this finish here, I'm guessing we're going to get a lot fewer than those 123 results, I think it was, that we saw in the previous iteration. And as you can see, we found two matching log entries, just two in this case. So if we scroll up to the start of the last one, it's right here. And on up to the start of the first one, it's right here. So we have these two different event stanzas with all the information contained within them. And if we scroll down, you'll see at the end of the first one, we do have the username Marsha. So that's what matched there. And the same holds true for the second one. It matched on username. So you can see this would be very helpful if we're looking, well, for this example, for RDP events containing a specific username. So very handy to be able to string both of these together. Another powerful option that can be used with a search subcommand is dash R to specify a regex pattern. Our example is going to be a little lame because we're just going to be using admin followed by the character sets A through Z in lower and upper case. So in other words, anything should match that starts with A, D, M, I, N followed by any alpha character in lower or upper case. Administrator, as an example, should match. So we'll use that in combination with event ID 21 and see how many hits we get for RDP related events using anything that starts with admin. A more real world example might be looking for valid IPv4 or IPv6 addresses or some other complex search pattern, but you get the idea. Just remember dash R in combination with a search subcommand can be extremely powerful. I'm going to use the up arrow here and you'll see some previous regex searches I was playing around with in the lab environment. Let's erase this pattern and in between the quotes, let's type in admin, A-D-M-I-N, then open bracket, a dash Z capital A dash Z and then close bracket. And then at the very end where we have 46, 24, let's erase this and just specify event ID 21. Okay. So that's pretty much it. We have dash R then the regex pattern contained between quotes. And then optionally, we can also combine it with dash E and specify an event ID. And this should result in just a handful of matches in this case, eight. And you can see at the very bottom of the last one, administrator. And if I scroll up, there's administrator again. So what you're looking at are indeed RDP related events, event ID 21 in specific that matched on administrator. So pretty cool. One last thing I want to show you with a search subcommand is the dash O option, which will allow us to write the output to a specified file. In this case, out.txt. So instead of spitting all this data onto the screen, it's just going to write it into a file, which we can then later parse using grep or just open it in a text editor and search for a pattern, whatever we want. So there's out.txt. It's about 7K and that's all there is to that. All right, time to move on to the most interesting part of Chainsaw and that's using the hunt subcommand. In its simplest use case, all we need to do is specify the hunt subcommand and then the path to the directory or to a single file that we would like the tool to parse, and that's it. Now we're just using my boring server 2019 sample event logs, but we do have some more interesting things to look at here in a moment, so bear with me. You'll notice in yellow, it says continuing without detection rules, no path provided. So we're using the built-in rules, not those Sigma rules that we could be using. More on that in a moment though. So let's see what kind of results we get just based on this. 
And as you can see, we get four detections that are found. And in this case, they're all of type RDP logins. So it's an administrator account, specifically administrator logging in via RDP, which is a, of course a type 10 logon. So it's showing us this saying, hey, these are some 4624 type tens we found for administrator that you may wanna look more closely at. They may be worthy of your attention. So nothing super exciting there, but check this out. With the released version of the tool, we have EVTX underscore attack underscore samples as a directory included within the package. And within that directory, as the name implies, we have quite a few Windows event logs that are way more interesting. So check it out. I'm going to specify that directory, but before we continue, I'm going to tack on a dash H at the end here so you can look at the context specific help for the hunt subcommand. And you can see it right here. There's one thing I want to call your attention to, and that's the dash dash lateral dash all parameter, which says list additional 4624 events potentially relating to lateral movement. This is something you're probably going to want to include if you're interested in detecting lateral movement. So we're going to be using that option, dash dash lateral dash all. Now using the sample event logs, let's see how many detections we're able to find. And the answer is 51. If we scroll up, that last section there are the 4624 logins, which could correspond to lateral movement. Here we have a user being added to an interesting group, which would obviously be something we would be interested in looking at. New user creations. We have system logs being cleared. We have the security log being cleared in this section here. And if we scroll up to this first section, we have our Windows Defender detections. So all very interesting stuff that we would certainly want to know about within our Windows event logs. But wait, it gets better because now, what about those Sigma rules? Let's see about using those. So to do that, we need two parameters. The first is dash dash rules or dash R, and we'll specify the directory where those rules live, which is Sigma underscore rules, and then dash dash mapping or dash M, and then we point to this mapping file you see here, the sigma dash mapping dot YML. So again, we need both parameters, dash dash rules or dash R, dash dash mapping or dash M. And then we're ready to actually tell the tool to repeat the same thing, but this time use those detection rules. And right underneath this converting detection rules, you should see an output that shows you how many rules are being used. In this case, 835 detection rules. So we should see everything we saw before and then some. And if you look at the bottom, we now have 394 detections. Again, you have the 4624 logins at the bottom, some of the same information we saw before, but look at this. Now we have suspicious command line. Here's a 4688 showing putty link or p-link, which could be used for tunneling. We also have, of course, some additional information here about, well, check it out. What do you think this is? These are suspicious image loads, which we didn't have before. And if we take a look at this, this looks a lot like registry related output to me. And sure enough, these are suspicious registry related events that we also did not have before. As we continue to scroll up, we have a lot of additional information with regards to processes that may warrant further inspection. So a lot of additional stuff is being shown to us based on those Sigma rules this can come in extremely handy. Now, one last thing I want to show you, and that is using the CSV output option. Since there was so much information on the screen here, if we use dash dash CSV, check this out. And I'll warn you, something interesting is about to happen. Check it out. As soon as it starts writing these CSVs to the file system, look at that. We have a Windows Defender alert that just fired. Now, why would that be? Well, the reason why is because some of these CSVs contain malicious PowerShell. And because it got written out to the file system, the Windows Defender detection fired because these are being written to a non-excluded path. I left this in here because I wanted to show you that this is something that could absolutely happen. It was an accident, trust me. I didn't even think about it at the time, but it's something that you want to be aware of. So check it out. It created a directory for us. And if we change into that directory, we will have those CSV files that it just wrote, and they're all nicely named. New user created, security audit log was cleared. I mean, these are very self-explanatory names, right? Now, because we have them in CSV format, 
we could simply use Timeline Explorer and open them and then parse through them or any tool for that matter, Excel, whatever you want to use. So just to show you that, I'll go ahead and double click on one of these, like, I don't know, how about um, 4624 logins? So I'll double click on that. I've associated CSV files with Timeline Explorer on this analysis system. So once we wait for Timeline Explorer to open here, oh, there we go. We have our 4624s. In this case, we have 18 lines of 4624 events that we may want to look into. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and exit and I don't know, let's try one more. Uh, let's see, what do we have here that looks interesting? There's, um, I don't know, how about image load, right? So I'll double click on image load and we'll look at the available output that we have here within Timeline Explorer for uh, other things that may be of interest. And so you can see the image file path and image loaded. We can see things like uh, suspicious uh, program locations. We can see fax service DLL search, WMI modules loaded, suspicious driver loads, all kinds of things here. So again, quite a bit of interesting information and probably the CSV option is something you're going to want to use if you are indeed using the hunt option because that way you have all the data written to files. Okay, let's do a quick recap and then bring this episode to a close. We saw that there were two major subcommands that we utilized with Chainsaw. The first was search. And using search, we started off by looking at dash E, which allowed us to specify an event ID. We then looked at dash S, which allowed us to specify a case sensitive string and dash I in combination with dash S allowed us to specify a case insensitive string. And we could combine them all together and use dash S, dash I, and dash E to get even more specific with our searches. We also talked about dash R, which allowed us to use a regex pattern to get really, really specific with searches and added tons of powerful capability to the tool just based upon that option alone. And we saw that using dash O allowed us to write the output from the search to a text file. Next up, we looked at the hunt functionality. Using the built-in rules, hunt was already proving to be pretty capable. But then when we added the sigma detection rules, which as a reminder, we had to use two parameters to do that, dash dash rules and dash dash mapping, then things got even more interesting because we could leverage the power of those sigma detection rules to find all sorts of interesting information within our Windows event logs. And like before, we could write that output to files as well using dash dash CSV, which would be highly recommended. That way you have the output in a CSV format, which you could then parse with Timeline Explorer or Excel or whatever you want. Whatever option you choose, you can see that this tool is extremely powerful and another thing that should be in your arsenal when it comes to analyzing and profiling Windows event logs. So I hope you've enjoyed this 13 cubed episode on Chainsaw. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I'll catch you in the next 13 cubed episode.